Hello. In this video, we'll introduce phase shifts of sinusoidal functions and go over how to use phase shifts to better model certain phenomena. So we'll introduce what a phase shift is, how it relates to the formula for a sinusoidal function, then looking at graphs to determine what the phase shift of those graphs is. We'll take this knowledge of phase shifts and apply it to modeling certain phenomena with sinusoidal functions. So remember that for a sinusoidal function of the form a sine of kx plus c, or cosine, the amplitude period and midline are determined by a, k, and c. Specifically, the amplitude of the function is the absolute value of a, the period is 2 pi divided by the absolute value of k, and the midline is the line y equals c. So now we will incorporate a horizontal translation into these functions. The amplitude, the scalar factor of a, is a vertical stretch, whereas the k represents a horizontal stretch. Similarly, the c, the midline, is a vertical shift, and now we're introducing a horizontal shift. For a sinusoidal function, this horizontal translation is called a phase shift. So let's take a look at the formulas for phase shifts. In general, if you have h of x and a constant b, h of x minus b is the same graph of h of x but shifted b units horizontally. So for sinusoidal functions of the form, a times the sine of k times the quantity x minus b, observe here we have the k factored out and an x minus b in parentheses plus c, or the same thing with cosine, the phase shifts is b. If, however, the function is given in this form, a times the sine of kx minus b, or cosine, then factoring out the k to produce an expression that looks like what we have in red above results in a phase shift of b over k. Now the form up here makes the phase shift very easy to read out. The phase shift is simply b. Most places tend to distribute that out and just get kx minus a number, and then you have to remember if this is in this distributed form, finding phase shift requires taking b over k. Now we will see that the cosine curve is a phase shift of the sine curve. We've actually already seen this visually, that the shape of the cosine and sine curve is identical, they're just horizontally different from one another. So consider y equals the sine of x plus pi over 2. So this has a phase shift of minus pi over 2. In the formula for phase shift, remember it was x minus b. So this phase shift is negative pi over 2. So if this is the graph of the regular sine function, if we shift it pi over 2 units left, a phase shift of minus pi over 2, observe now that the maximum exactly occurs on the y-axis. That's the cosine curve. So if we phase shift the sine curve left by one quadrant by pi over 2, we produce the cosine curve. Similarly, if we begin with the cosine curve and shift it one quadrant forward, so pi over two units to the right, we would produce the sine curve. That is to say, sine and cosine are phase shifts of one another. Each sinusoidal function below, we're going to find the amplitude, the period, the midline, and now also the phase shift. So the first example, f of x equals negative 2 times the sine of 1 half times the quantity x minus pi, all plus 3, whereas part b, g of x will be the cosine of 4x plus 5 minus 6.7. So for part a, we can find the amplitude the same way we always have. It's the absolute value of negative 2, which is 2. The period will be 2 pi divided by that scalar factor k. This produces a period of 4 pi. The phase shift here is clearly marked as just being pi, x minus pi in parentheses inside the sine function, so we are shifting pi units to the right. And the midline is clearly there as y equals 3. Now if we look at part b, it's going to be very similar with one small difference. The amplitude is 1, we're multiplying cosine by 1. The period is 2 pi over 4, otherwise known as pi over 2. But now, for the phase shift, observe that in this function we don't have this 4 times a parenthetical term, rather the 4 has been distributed across whatever parenthetical term may have been there. So we compute the phase shift as negative 5 over 4. That means it's been shifted 5 fourths units left. And the midline is the same as it would have been before, negative 6.7. So now we're given a graph, let's try to find an equation. Notice an equation, not the equation, because there will be multiple correct answers, infinitely many in fact. So we're trying to get an equation 
of the form a times the sine of k times x minus b all plus c or with a cosine in there. We're generally going to prefer this form where the phase shift is easier to read out rather than distributing out that k. So there's going to be multiple correct values we can take for b. Changing the phase shift will give different equations but the same function overall. So let's go ahead and work this out. First of all, the amplitude is 2 and the midline is 0. We see that there is a maximum height of 2 and a minimum of minus 2. The midline is the average of those two values, which is 0, and the amplitude is how far the max and min are away from the midline, which is 2 units. The period is also 3. If we identify one maximum value to the next, we see that that goes from negative 1 to 2. That's a distance of 3. So we can compute k to be 2 pi divided by the period, or just 2 pi over 3. Now to find the phase shift, there's one way that's a bit easier than the others. A cosine curve will have its maximum at x equals b. Now the generic cosine curve has its maximum when you input 0 into the cosine. The cosine of 0 is 1, that's its maximum. So in general, a cosine curve achieves its maximum when you input 0, which corresponds to x equals b. So all we have to do is identify a value that is at a maximum, and that can help us determine b. So if we let b equal negative 1, because that is one value where we have a maximum, then we find we can let f of x be 2 times the cosine of 2 pi over 3 times the quantity x plus 1. If we had chosen b equals 2, because that's another maximum of the function, we would get something very similar. 2 times the cosine of 2 pi over 3 times x minus 2, having set b equal to 2. These are both correct. Now there are many other correct answers. Since the period is 3, if there's a maximum at 1 and at 2, there will also be one at 5, so you could put an x minus 5 here. This was all predicated on finding values of b that correspond to maximums so that you can use a positive number times cosine. The positive cosine curve starts at its maximum. What about a negative cosine curve? This is exactly halfway through the period. Halfway between negative 1 and 2 is positive 1 half. So if we chose b equals 1 half, then we would have a curve starting at its minimum, which is negative cosine. So you could say just as well that you would have f of x equals negative 2 times the cosine of 2 pi over 3 times the quantity x minus 1 half. Because now what we have is a negative cosine curve starting at its minimum has the correct amplitude, has the correct period, and the phase shift of 1 half tells us to start here at the value of 1 half. You could also identify some midline points and attempt to say if you're at the midline and increasing, you can use a sign, whereas if you're at the midline and decreasing, you can use a negative sign. So there are many, many correct answers, but in general, if you only have to produce one answer, the positive cosine curve tends to be the easiest one. Find a place where the function has its maximum and model the function with a cosine curve multiplied by a positive number. Many different physical situations can be modeled using a sinusoidal function, something with some sort of periodic behavior. So typical examples would include the motion of a mass on a spring. It goes up and down and up and down. The height or displacement from circular motion, so something moving around in a circle, or quantities with some sort of seasonal or daily variation like temperatures or how much daylight there is. In these sorts of applications, frequency is a word that frequently comes up, and it's how many cycles there are per unit time, which is just one divided by the period. Period measures time per cycle. Frequency is cycles per time. They're just reciprocals of one another. So as an example, the displacement measured in inches of a mass suspended by a spring is given by the function f of t equals 6 times the sine of 4 pi t, where t is measured in seconds. Let's find the amplitude, period, and frequency of the motion of the mass. Observe there is no phase shift in this example. What's the displacement of the mass after 1.5 seconds? How many oscillations does the mass complete in 4 seconds? So starting at the beginning, we read off the amplitude as 6, 
The period is 2 pi divided by what is multiplying the variable. That's 4 pi. This simplifies to 1 half, so the period is 1 half second. For frequency, all you have to do is reciprocate. 1 divided by 1 half is 2. There are 2 cycles per second for this spring. For part b, if we want to find the displacement of the mass after 1.5 seconds, all we have to do is plug in f of 1.5. 4 pi times 1.5 is 6 pi, so this is 6 times the sine of 6 pi. 6 pi represents an angle of going all the way around the circle three times, at which point you have zero vertical displacement. So after 1.5 seconds, the spring is exactly at its midline, its original position, which corresponds to t equals zero as well. The frequency is 2. We already measured that in part A. So how many oscillations does the mass complete in four seconds? Well, if it completes two oscillations every second, multiply that by four seconds to get eight total oscillations. Now let's assume that a physical system can be modeled by a sinusoidal function where t represents time. We're going to build an equation for this function as long as we know some information. Do we know the maximum and minimum values? Do we know the period? And do we know some specific time at which a maximum occurs? It could also be a minimum or, in some situations, even a midline value if you know whether it's increasing or decreasing. But as we mentioned earlier, generally the easiest thing to read off is a maximum value. This will correspond to a positive cosine curve. So because we're going to be given a time at which a maximum occurs, we're going to take a cosine curve multiplied by a positive number. Now a is going to be the amplitude, so we just have to take max minus min divided by 2. We know we're not going to multiply this by negative 1. You can multiply functions by minus 1, but because we're looking at a time where the maximum occurs, we have a positive cosine curve here. k is 2 pi over the period. Remember, the period is computed as 2 pi over k. This also tells us that k is 2 pi over the period. c, the midline, is the average of the max and min values, and b is the phase shift. Since we're using a positive cosine curve, the phase shift will be when the maximum occurs. Now you can do this with other functions. Okay? If you are given a time when the minimum occurs, all that would change is you would take this amplitude, but then you would have a minus a out in front here. Because you are starting at a minimum, you want a negative cosine curve. If you were given something a little exotic, like here is a time where you are at the midline, but the function is increasing, if you're at the midline but increasing, that would be a positive A with a sign. A midline but decreasing would be a negative A with a sign. So there are other variants of this, but this is the most common situation. Given a maximum value, find a positive cosine curve. So let's look at an example. Assume that outdoor temperature over the course of a day is modeled with a sinusoidal function. The high temperature of 80 degrees Fahrenheit occurs at 3 p.m., and the low temperature was 64 degrees Fahrenheit. Find a function for the temperature t hours after midnight. So based on the model, what was the temperature at 4 a.m.? So we're going to look for a sinusoidal function. Since we are given a time at which there is a maximum temperature, we're going to use a positive cosine. For the amplitude and the midline, we just need to refer to the maximum and minimum values. The difference divided by 2 is the amplitude. That's 8. The average is 72. So we've already determined the amplitude and the midline. For k, we need to find the period, but the wording of the problem suggests the function can be modeled over the course of a day and we're measuring t in hours. So we want the period to be 24. That lets us solve for k to be 2 pi over 24 or pi over 12. b is a phase shift. Since we have chosen to use a positive cosine curve because we were given a high temperature, we just need to input the time corresponding to this high temperature. 3 p.m. is 15 hours after midnight. We were told to use a function where t represents hours after midnight. So we set b equal to 15, and that gives us our function f of t is 8 times the cosine of pi over 12 times the quantity t minus 15, all plus 72. You could get the same answer, by the way, by saying that 3 p.m. represents 9 hours before midnight and setting b equal to negative 9. You'd still have the same function here, it would just look different. We can now complete the problem. We're asked to compute the temperature at 4 a.m., that's 4 hours after midnight. We simply plug in t equals 4, and if you plug this into a calculator, it's about 64.3 degrees.
let's take a look at another example. A Ferris wheel has a diameter of 60 meters. Riders board the wheel at the bottom, at the very bottom of the wheel, which is level with a loading platform, and that platform itself is two meters above the ground. It takes five minutes for the wheel to go all the way around. Find a sinusoidal function for the height of a rider above the ground t minutes after they board the wheel. So let's just draw a quick diagram. We have ground level, we have a loading platform, and we have the Ferris wheel, and we are told the bottom of the wheel aligns with the top of the platform. The wheel has a diameter of 60 meters. The loading platform is 2 meters high. The period is the amount of time for one revolution. We're told that's 5 minutes. The maximum height is up at the very top of the wheel. This point here is up at the top of the wheel. Now, since the wheel has diameter 60 meters, but the loading platform gives us another 2 meters, the maximum height is 62 meters, and this will occur halfway through a revolution. We are told we start our model with the rider boarding at the very bottom, so they will get to the very top exactly halfway through. So since it takes 5 minutes to go around, at t equals 2.5, we have reached the very top. The minimum height occurs at the very bottom of the wheel. That's two meters, that's at the loading platform, and we're gonna let that happen at t equals zero. It also happens at t equals five. Okay, so here's all the information we've got so far. We want to find a sinusoidal function that matches this. We're electing to use a positive cosine curve because this is just the one we default to if not told to use something else. We know the period is five, it takes five minutes for the wheel to go all the way around. We know the maximum value of 62 meters occurs at 2.5 minutes in, and the minimum value is two. This gives us all the information we need. So the amplitude is the difference between the max and min divided by two, that's 30. Observe that this is the radius of the wheel. The period is five, so k is two pi over that. The midline is the average of the max and min, that's 32 meters. Observe that that is the loading of two meters plus one radius of the wheel. And finally, the phase shift. Since we're using a positive cosine curve, we just need to find a max value, that's t equals 2.5, so we set b equal to 2.5. That allows us to say that the function which models the height of our rider t minutes after loading is given by 30 times the cosine of 2 pi over 5 times the quantity t minus 2.5 all plus 32.